Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the Restoration Druid and what I do to succeed. I recently gave it a go on this specialization, multi rank one on this specialization, but haven't played it for a while. I was in full greens, but I was able to get just under 2,500 even despite that. Now, in this current build of Resto Druid, I love starting the game with Innervate and two Life Blooms on my allies, and then just hotting up the targets. This way, you are likely to see a second Innervate if you use it as soon as possible. You want to be adaptive swarming and scenario warding very soon on the target that's getting attacked. I can see the mage is the most pushed in, so they are likely to be the main target. And then you want to jump into tree form right away. You can use this offensively as I am right now where I'm just chucking in wraths, but be aware that you know, you're know you going to have to get back to healing very soon. Um, and I'm still holding on to my iron bark. I still have this available, but I like using you know scenario ward, adaptive swarm, and then leading that into iron bark. That way you can chain two of these defensives and get you know upwards of 20 seconds of a lot of relief in terms of single target damage we can adapt to swarm once again i'm just dropping my treants pretty freely pretty willy-nilly um, and the main reason for this is the build that i'm running which is linked in the description down below has tranquility cooldown reduction so my main goal is to make my team as durable as possible at the initial stages of a match which again in solo shuffle people are going to shove every cooldown at you um, and this is just going to make it so that you can reset all those cooldowns and get them more frequently in the match and be able to outpace some of your opponents so here the shadow priest is pushing towards me so i'm just staying max range i'm playing with a warlock and a mage my goal is to not really get involved my goal is to not be you know a liability here the shadow priest does eventually push in and look as soon as you're crowd controlled your allies are gonna have to use major defensives your mage has to use an ice block here in this position so you definitely want to just be trying to avoid crowd control i could have attempted to cyclone the priest while they were out of range of their team and try and take them out of the match but my main goal is to stay generally speaking as far away from the combat as possible here i see an opportunity to sneak in and get a clone on the druid though as the priest has used a lot of their crowd control the warriors out of range of me so i do take that moment when it does present itself uh, but i would say that this is you know a higher risk than it is reward we'll push over we'll bash the priest as the druid goes into a poly stop that master spell uh, but we get feared and look see being cheeky playing on top of them and trying to get crowd control is going to put you in a really rough spot like look how low this mage is getting i can't believe that he trusted me to save him here this is a standard combo you can scenario ward swift mend and then ns that'll extend the scenario ward and bounce your ns to heal the target up for a significant amount this is a really good combo of heals but even with that combo of heals we're falling behind we still have our tranquility so we're gonna use our tranquility here and start resetting all of our cooldowns and look how powerful this is our nature swiftness is almost back but we have to cancel it early we jump into tree form with that reset but we do get feared um, when there is aoe crowd control on the other team that is the one thing you need to be paying the most close attention to because you don't want to drop your treants into an aoe fear and aoe blind so usually i want to wait until that aoe cc is used and then i'm going to drop the rest of my treants to continue healing um, and here we can use the swift men into ns try and get that boosted effect of the heal keep dropping our treants our treants are a huge amount of our healing you definitely want to make sure that you're using those as frequently as possible we'll bash up the priest as an opportunity presents itself here clone is trinket warriors getting low we can dump in some wraths some moonfire and we're able to net a kill there so when you do ultimately get time to breathe in tree farm you're probably not going to be as under geared as i am um, in this specific lobby you're going to be able to wrath a lot more um, in tree form and star surge a lot more um, and that's something that you definitely want to be mixing in but if you're under geared like i am um, i don't know if my character's armory is updated for this but it's not very high item level you, you want to be focusing on getting quite a bit of mastery with a little bit of haste um, a lot of druids are playing very different stats i'd say somewhere between you know 15 to 20 percent haste and then the rest of it being mastery is probably a good mix um, another benefit of this build is that we are running the oath of the elder druid honor talent so when we shapeshift to form we're going to proc heart of the wild this will make us really tanky when we're getting attacked and it's a super underrated talent i take this over the purge protection now um and it's going to make you basically unkillable if you're a target i see a lot of druids dying really easily and it's likely because they're not running the oath of the elder druid here our warriors pushing in aggressively so we're just going to iron bark scenario ward right away we're not going to play any games with this get life on ourselves so our hots are ticking faster on our allies and we extend all those hots with the swift men so our warrior is going to be completely fine you just load up your target with hots and as soon as that scenario ward triggers and starts ticking you just want to swift bend it extend all those hots and as soon as that extension is over i'm jumping into tree form um, pretty much as soon as possible again because i want it to go on cooldown and i want to reset it we used innervate out of the gate so hopefully we're going to see two of them in the game so that we could we can have a little bit of a mana edge over our, our opponent healer um, as three minute cooldowns are really tough to see twice in a game that's why you want to use them as soon as possible we get knocked off the side into a really tough spot here we're going to wild charge to the center bridge uh, get back into tree form but here comes a ring of frost so we're going to, have to peek over the edge we get a scenario ward we're going to rejuve we're 
we're going to swift mend that and this is like the main staple heal of the resto druid is scenario ward swift mend as soon as he's got that i know he's fine so i start lobbing out solar wraths usually while scenario ward is ticking if they keep attacking that target you can start doing damage now they're swapping off of it and they're going warlock so we'll adaptive swarm the warlock instead so we've always got a heal a big heal available for an ally while we're silenced we're going to bash so we're just going to bash the shadow priest there is no counter spell so i could have gone for a clone here but I'm playing a little bit too close again. And these are the risks of playing too close. You're gonna get feared and then you're going to get sheeped. Um, although I could have probably just gone for a clone there and looked at the fact that Counterspell wasn't on cooldown. Here we're gonna use Scenarian Ward, Swift Mend it, uh, although our Reju falls off, so it becomes a little bit stressful. Reju extend it, and we're kind of getting attacked here. So we're gonna Tranquility just to take advantage of the fact that I can immune damage here and reset my cooldowns and get to that second tree. And Mage kind of just falls over because he went into a bad spot downstairs at a line of sight. Um, but Tranquility is a really, high value ability because you either want to use it to protect yourself from dying right because it's an immunity to damage but you also want to use it to get the cooldown reduction so it's kind of an efficiency cooldown and you have to think of it both ways so there i was able to get double value of it as opposed to using iron bark on myself which i could use for an ally i can use the tranquility with me at half health and reset my tree and get closer to the next set of cooldowns you got to think about it just trying to race to your next cool uh, next cooldown so that you have really high throughput and high healing output and that's basically my main staple of the game is like Life on the target getting attack, scenario where swift mend it, adaptive swarm, either the send ward target if they're tunneling or the up swap target. Um, here again, innervate, hots up on the team, regrowth myself with two life blooms, and we're just popping tree form this time first global. Uh, we're star surging the mage as he's playing aggressive. Against mage, I think it makes sense for me to go tree form right away because I'm immune to poly. So then I can just kind of stay on top of the mage. I can do damage. I can go wherever I want. And I don't need to worry about being spam polymorphed while trying to heal through damage. We're crowd controlling the warrior, trying to take him out of the game. And that way our casters can free cast. But we get spell reflected on the clone here. It's fortunately on DR from the dragon's breast. So it's not a big deal. We're going to overgrowth hots back on the warlock. We put iron bark up on the lock. Now, typically at higher ratings, people will swap targets. So you can see they're not attacking the lock anymore. They immediately go on the priest, which is why you want to save a big heal. So I save scenario ward. I save Scenarian Ward, the Priest on the swap, Swift Mend it, Extend it, so now the Warlock's got Iron Bark, the Priest has Scenarian Ward and Adaptive Swarm. Both of them are going to be very durable with those heal over time effects, which is one of the main reasons Resto Druid is so good, is because you have these kind of split cooldown effects. When a Priest paints up one dude, they got to paint up the other dude most of the time when they swap off of it, whereas Resto Druid has other powerful effects on low cooldown, and as long as you're splitting those resources appropriately and allocating them, you're going to feel really strong. Here I see some opportunities to do some damage, so I'm just throwing in a Star Surge, I'm charging in, I'm rooting the target, just trying to get a bit aggressive stampeding my team snaring ward up onto the priest and we're going to want to swift mend this as soon as possible and then i know they're probably going to swap so i've got adaptive swarm i actually launched it on the priest here i think it's because the warlock got us adaptive swarm that just moved over and we're just going to tranquility so i think my goal here was to just get as many abilities on cooldown as possible so that my tranquility would reset all of them and th like this is where the insane value of druid comes from is getting the tranquility value you just need to be aware that like hey if you use that tranquility to reset your cooldowns you might become a target but that oath of the elder druid heart of the while when we go bear form is going to make it pretty easy for us to survive later on it also makes your clone super fast here we've got a uh, scenario ward up and iron bark on the lock and we're spamming heals in tree form we've got a couple treants as well um, and we're just focused on single target healing they're not swapping they're just hammering down you just got to look at where the warrior is if the warrior isn't charging off that target they're going to continue attacking the same thing that's next to them uh, we're bash out of the clone control the warrior as much as we can here try and slow it down and we get a tree of life proc which is another kind of new talent or to this patch basically uh, which is going to give you another tree of life activation which is going to give you really boosted healing and also immunity to polymorphs um, and solar wrath instant solar wrath damage so it's really good offensively i'm lobbing in solar wrath here through the die by the sword and likely i'm making i'm making the difference there on being able to actually kill the target um because without that extra solar wrath damage with die by the sword like he may have actually survived there so resto druid is actually a lot more fun i would say um it's it's super broken right now so you're, you're definitely going to be abusing something that's broken but it's actually super fun uh at the same time because you can contribute offensively um so i'm hoping that they'll unlock conquest at some point so i can actually buy full mastery gear and actually have an appropriate item level to do this this um, a little bit more regularly because basically the old staples of resto druid with treant management um, as well as being able to mix in a little bit of damage here we've got Shadow Priest and Mage. So main you know, goal of this comp is to try and drag the warrior around the map and try and kill the warrior, pull him into bad positions, knock him off the map. Again, double life plume, innervate, regrowth, three targets, maximum hots out, adaptive swarm, tree form instantly. Not gonna be holding on to any cooldowns. Make a mistake here, bashing into Bladestorm. Bladestorm is gonna immune your stun. Warriors have multiple ways to immune a bash. You have to be careful with that. Uh, scenario Ward Iron Bark, Swift Mend Extend, big hots onto the mage. Actually, Swift Mended, uh, okay, so now Swift Mend Extend. You need to be careful with Scenario Ward because if a shield is on the target, it's 
not going to start ticking right away. The shield needs to dissipate. So I waited there for the mage shield to end, and then it started ticking, and then we swift mend it so it extends. They're swapping off that defense uh, mechanism. They're trying to go on to the priest potentially, so hotting up the priest as well, dropping down an efflorescence in the middle of the bridge. So if my teammates want to keep playing aggressive, they can. And I'm trying to look for clones here on the warrior. Um, it's defensive clones. The lock's in a fear. I'm at no threat of counter spell. It's on cooldown. So I'm just trying to get control of the warrior. Um, but I would say trying to like cast clones in front of a bunch of interrupts is probably going to be a mistake. We extend our scenario ward. We proc a tree of life. This is giving us instant wraths. So I want a wrath here because my mage is fully hotted. He's got send ward adaptive. He's really looking tanky. Uh, but then I see him get coiled with sharpened blade into the middle of the map and I get feared. So this then became a rough ride. Um, Again, he went a little bit deep at that point. I was thinking that he was okay, and I was likely overconfident. Um, although I think ice blocking there was probably the only way that he survived. Even if I switched a GCD to a regrowth, it probably was unlikely to be enough. Sharpen Blade is a really tough mechanic to be able to heal through. It's 50% healing reduction. So as a DPS player, you need to be aware of that. Um, I would generally say as a mage, you don't want to go in offensively unless you have an alter time, or you know that you're really not the target, or you you're gonna have to expect a block especially on blades edge arena um so just a, definitely a mispositional error there uh on this map um and maybe my gear if my healing was a little bit higher the higher item level it would have given more buffer time for him to get the block off innervate double life plume rejuves out pushing towards getting aggressive dropping my treants jumping into tree form that's a bit risky to drop the treants there like that um again because i think they just got knocked off the side of the bridge but also because they could get dragon's breath so you can see the treants downstairs in the bottom and they're not actually going to be super effective this is why i'm saying the treants are actually a really difficult mechanic to organize yourself around i would say you generally want to be saving at least one on your action bar here i'm getting attacked so we're going to overgrowth ourselves we're going to bark skin this is where our oath of the elder druid will come into handy if we need it we can go bear form and get double frenzied regen charges but with tree form up i think we're going to be fine we got scenario ward on ourselves i'm mostly worried about the warrior and myself in this matchup shadow priests are generally very tanky to casters but warriors have to compromise their positioning and then when they compromise i have to compromise and then i'm a target so you know be more aware of your warrior when you're healing melee dps against double caster um then so much than your your caster dps here the druids using their tranquility i'm kind of just using my tranquility as well i want to reset my tree i want to get back to another tree of life as soon as possible we get a fear on the druid i get counterspelled into a sheep so this was definitely a misplay on my part and this is again the risks of trying to play too aggressive um i think my shadow priest and my warrior likely need to play aggressive in this matchup standing on top of the druid and getting fears but myself do i really need to be here um and casting clones like look at this positioning that's compromising me by staying in the middle of the map like this it's getting me spam cc'd um, and we're falling behind we've had to use life swap die by the sword we still have dispersion so we're going to dispersion we're going to come out of the cc and our warrior i think chase the mage which just ended up not being a good move here because now he's out of my line of sight we try and jump in line of sight and an sm but damp is quite high here at this point we've got double trend down we try and get in tree but another chaos bolt comes out with a spike and it's just not going to be enough so it can be really tough when you're healing a warrior into these kind of double casters and chasing them around and again this is where i think like like going too aggressive and trying to find CC um, is, is going to end up backfiring on you. And this was like a, a really good example of that. So now we're on the final round. This is the round for us to be able to break the tie. We've got a mage, we've got a warrior. Uh, main goal should be to make your melee DPS as safe as possible so that they can go where they need to go. And you can see me getting CC'd like that meant that they became you know vulnerable to damage. And then they went too aggressive while they were vulnerable. And they and we ended up losing the match because of that. You want to make sure that your warrior is as hotted as possible so they can go wherever they need to go against double caster, double life plume regrowth three targets with through the talents here innervate get hots rolling get the three stack life blooms up get my team super ready to go um and be aggressive here and we're just going to tree of life right away like i literally don't even hold it like, even before the game has started i just want to be in tree of life have maximum healing boosted up here um, we can regrowth ourselves to apply a regrowth to the targets with life plum you can see warrior is the target he's going in really deep scenario ward swift mend it and sm get him topped regrowth ourselves here in a moment Drop, drop down some treants, drop down the adaptive swarm. Warrior should be good with adaptive swarm and scenarian ward though. So they're swapping onto mage. When they swap to mage, mage should generally alter time. Although right now he's in a bash and he can't really do anything and I'm feared downstairs. Um, but mages generally when they get swapped to will alter time right away. We're going to overgrowth. Iron barking the mage. I don't like this play by myself here. Uh, again, because the mage still has alter time. Whereas the warrior is likely going to use die by the sword, which is a much longer cooldown than alter. It's a lot more precious. I did get a clone here onto the shadow priest. I'm just taking the shadow priest out of the game. But I'm not like running in on top of the druid. I'm playing a little bit close to the fight, but not passing this middle line with where my warrior is. We're going to bash the priest while we're silenced. We get a sheep onto the druid. Um, we get a double coil here. 
here could shadow meld that. Whenever you see an animation of a spell in the sky like that, you can shadow meld an immune unit. We're in a scenario ward. Try and get the swift men off here. We proc a tree. We get an NS, but it was die by the sword. So if I had iron bark here for the warrior, it would have been a lot better. I see Polly's on the on the priest, but he's going to get dispelled. So I cyclone him. Then I swap the cyclone over to the druid. We got the warlock downstairs, trying to star surge him, trying to get aggressive here. Um, when you have mage druid synergy with Polly and clone, th this is where like spamming clone can be more advantaged um, if you're min maxing the DRs. But without voice, it can be really tough to do. So I'm just cloning the druid three times, trying to really put him behind in this position. We could even maybe try and go for a low clone on the lock, but I swapped the clone onto the priest instead as it's off DR, and we've got pressure, warrior's blade storming, he's going to be doing really big damage with that. Chases a warlock, uh, off the side he's just going to port, now he's got iron bark, so the warlock's probably not going to die through it. Um, so the mage sheeping the warlock is actually the right move. I think swapping to the druid here would be a good idea. Swapping off hots is already always a good idea. Nice knock there by the mage, knocking them out of that circle from the warlock so he can get, can't get a triple coil. I'm in a tranquility here with both of them standing on top of me. I just don't want to get CC'd or attacked. We just used a lot of defensives. That tranquility's reset all my defensives. So now my warrior's really tanky. I can go for a clone because he has iron bark and he has full hots. So this is the difference between the last game and this game is that I have defensive cooldowns active on the target being attacked, which is mitigating the damage and giving me time to cast crowd control and put my team into a better spot without throwing which then inevitably leads to our victory in this round so this is the improvement that i made just throughout this round alone is that make sure your target is as healthy as possible before you go offensive you don't want to just leave them completely bare um, and then you get cc'd and then they've got nothing so but if you get iron bark send ward and you swift mended it it's extended you know you got a huge row of hots it's a really good time then to go for crowd control so i hope that this video is helpful for you um, in figuring out how to you you know, maximize your rest of your gameplay when it comes to PvP. Uh, if it was, make sure to subscribe to the channel, comment down below with your thoughts and, and content that you would like to see. And other than that, thank you very much for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one.